أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Congratulations to you all brothers and sisters on this occasion where you celebrate the wilada of Sayyida Ma'asuma the one when we call her Sayyida we mean that she was Sayyida and when the holy prophet was talking about women who were honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said there are four one is Maryam and then Asiya Maryam mother of Isa Asiya the wife of Firaun and then Khadija and then Fatima the question was who is Sayyida Sayyida to Nisa'il Alameen the Holy Prophet said they are all Sayyida however Fatima is Sayyida to Nisa'il Awalina Wal Akhirin she is the lady of all the women from the time when the earth was created until the end of the time. This is Fatima. So when we call her Sayyida, we mean that she is Sayyida. There was a scholar, a Muslim scholar, in terms of spiritualism, he said the following, talking to women. He said, you are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. And then he said, women have been glorified and praised some time. They are human beings who fail to recognize the pitfalls on another time. When we look at this, we come to understand that when we talk about Fatima to Zahra, indeed, she was the center of spiritualism. And especially as our brother Ibrahim Al-Ansari has said clearly in Hadith, which is we read, Hadith Al-Kisa, when Jibrail came to ask who are under the Kisa, the clock, Al-Yamani, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered Jibrail. He said, Hum Fatimatu wa abuha wa ba'aluha wa banuha. So now the question here, especially for people who have that interest who want to know more about balagha the the wordings within a sentence and why you start with a particular name and not the other whom fatima why allah didn't say whom rasulullah whom muhammad wa ali wal hasan wal hussein wa fatima but he said whom fatima tu wa abuha wa ba'luha wa banuha this shows the position of Fatima to Zahra. So here I can say, you all today who are here, you are so lucky. In the sense that you understand the position of Fatima. You decided to leave each and everything to attend this particular program to honor Fatima to Zahra. You know what it means? On the day of Qiyama, as per narration, Fatima, on that day, Allah will allow her to be known as Fatima. She, when she will be walking, Allah will say, okay, all the people now you need to know Fatima is walking. So they lower their gazes. They will lower. We, we will lower our gazes. And Fatima will be passing. And then Allah will say, now Fatima, this is your time. Pick anyone who used to love you. So everyone who used to love Fatima, you are all, inshallah, going to be there. You will be picked by her the way the bird picks the seeds or the grains to eat and you will be taken to paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us that moment, inshallah ta'ala. So now when we look at Fatima in terms of spiritualism, in terms of her being a role model, here I can say clearly that Fatima was 
and she is still the role model not only for women but also for men and when we say this we come to know that a woman any woman according to some communities being from africa i know how we treat our women in africa maybe in arabia is better than africa or maybe it's the other way around however today when we talk about women we know that they are mothers but we fail to recognize them as mothers they are mothers because they take good care of humanity they are wonderful teachers who can teach us sincerity there is a wrong understanding which says that those who will be in big number in hell will be women not men i say this is a wrong understanding especially when we come to talk about fatima to zara and her spiritualism we can learn from women sincerity and this is when outward image is in harmony with the inner self when the outward image is in harmony with the inner self you will not see nifaq you will not see hypocrisy you will see sincerity so when you look at women in the time of jahiliya they were taken as subhuman even they were not humans in india subcontinent when a man passed away a woman would be buried or burnt with the husband but this is not the case within islam it's unfortunate to say today because many people miss to know the position of fatima in terms of her status many women including muslims are taken only for as as business entity there was a time i was looking at a tank uh, these these uh, weapons which are now actually america and russia want to cause the problem in the world they are preparing the ground to fight against one another the tank is on sale and the picture of the one who is advertising is a woman what's the connection between the two this big we weapon and this woman it's because why women are not taken as human beings they are there as a commodity unfortunately in islam there is divine and when we need this divine equilibrium we come to know that the status of woman is recognized in the holy quran in the ahadith and in any ayah which you read which recognize the position of a woman Fatima to Zahra will be number 1 for example in surah al ahzab surah number 33 ayah number 35 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says innal muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat wal qanitina wal qanitati was sadiqina was sadiqati was sabirina until the end a'adda allah lahum ajran azima here allah talks about the status of men and women when it comes to spiritualism in al muslimin indeed believing o muslim men wal muslimat and muslim women wal mu'minina wal mu'minat believing women believing men qanitina qanitat devoted men and women sadiqina sadiqat the aya in short talks about everything which a muslim man can do in terms of spiritualism a woman can do the same but unfortunately it is we when we look at islam we look according to our lenses and we think especially men yeah young men we think that we are better than women yeah we can pray more than them yeah we can fast more than them we can give sadaqa more than them we take physical manifestation of our creation that it is a it is a scale which makes us to be better than them here this ayah i repeat again surah al ahzab surah number 33 ayah 35 tells us the other way around whatever you can do women can do that and that's why with fatima to zahra we come to learn that rasulullah muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam 
Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Honored Fatima. From day one, Rasulullah was so happy when Fatima was born. From day one, Rasulullah was so happy because in the house was Fatima. From day one, Rasulullah showed the respect towards Fatima. When Fatima used to enter wherever the Holy Prophet was sitting, Rasulullah would bring Fatima closer to her to show that she can be even better than many men. And truly speaking, this was Fatima. Fatima, at the lifetime of the Holy Prophet, you could see that she participated from the beginning of the mission of Rasulullah. Rasulullah goes to pray near Al Kaaba, Fatima will be there. Fatima would go and help Rasulullah. In many occasions, it came to a point that Fatima to Zahra used to, to speak about Islam according to the way she understood Islam. When we talk about spiritualism of Fatima, spiritualism, spirit, spiritually, we talk about ruh, we talk about nafs, we talk about qalb, the heart, the physical appearance of our bodies is one thing. Fatima tells us to focus on ruh, to focus on nafs, something which today, unfortunately, most of us, we fail to pay attention to that. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats these verses to say that if you want to get success in this world, you need to focus on your heart, focus on your qalb, focus on your nafs. And qalb, according to some scholars, they say it is known as qalb litaqallubiha because it changes. Today you are happy, tomorrow not. Today you love someone, tomorrow you hate. Today you want to pray nawafil, tomorrow you don't want even to pray fara'id. Fatima says, focus on your nafs. When you focus on your nafs, then you will find peace and tranquility. And that's why when she used to stand on mihrab, the nur would be seen by the angels because Fatima is praying. Fatima when she was praying, Al-Hasan wal Hussein alayhi salam, they observed their mother who is praying and then they listen to the dua. They hear she is doing dua for the neighbors and then at the end she prays for herself. Then they want to know, mother, why are you praying for others? Then she says, Al-Jar thummadar. When you pray for others and their dua will be accepted, yours too will be accepted. That is spiritualism. There was no anania with Fatima. There was no that selfishness, focusing on herself only, but she was focusing on others. We learn from her in terms of spiritualism that there were or there are moments which will come to your life when, yes, you are doing what you are doing for the sake of Allah, but the time may force you to stand against the status quo for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here we know that Fatima, after the death of the Holy Prophet, she walked with many women to go to talk to the government of the time, to the Khalifa of the time, to say, you know what? I have rights in Islam. Why are you taking them away? She didn't want this world, the material world, but she wanted to say, you know, even with spiritualism, you have to fight for your right. You have to fight for your haq. And when she was challenged that, we have heard Rasulullah talking that whenever a messenger dies, whatever he leaves behind will be inherited or will be taken by the government. Then Fatima said, is this religion different to what I know? Why in the Holy Quran you can inherit your father, but I cannot? Where did you get this from? And she started talking about Quran. And indeed, she was that woman who could speak the Holy Quran. There was that which is known as Mus'haf Fatima. The Mus'haf of Fatima. Mus'haf is not Quran. Any, any copy of Quran is Mus'haf. But not any Mus'haf is Quran. Mus'haf, it's a notebook which Fatima used to write. 
about the meanings of the tafsir of the Holy Quran. She knew tafsir of the Holy Quran. She practiced that. And that you could see when Sayyida Zainab was in Iraq with the father Amirul Mu'mineen, she used to teach Quran according to the mother Fatima, the way she understood Islam. Fatima as Zahra alayha salam. Not only in terms of ibadah she was above many men, but also she stood with the husband Amirul Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam. According to narration, in terms of spiritualism, second day after the marriage of Amirul Mu'mineen Ali and Fatima, the Holy Prophet came to visit them. And he said to Ali, Ali, how do you find Fatima in terms of a wife? Ali said, I have found a good helper in terms of spiritualism. This is Ali bin Abi Talib. Ali, when Ali prays, he goes beyond this world. But he says, Fatima is a good help in terms of spiritualism. Yes, from Fatima, we learn that Islam can be understood according to the understanding of Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam. When she was asked, why do we need salah prayers? She said, it's because you need to be a, a humble servant of Allah. And this humility, humility can come through salah. So how many of us, when we pray, we see that humility? Sometimes we miss the point. Why? It's because we want to start with Allahu Akbar, aiming to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to finish salah. But Fatima, when she enters in salah, into salah, she was in a different world. So now, as we understand, when we talk about spiritualism, the end goal of spiritualism and taking Fatima as our role model is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Talking about Fatima, he says, Yarda Allahu, Allah, Yarda li ridaha, wa yagdabu li ghadabiha. Allah is happy with the happiness of Fatima and Allah is angry with the anger of Fatima. Allahu Akbar. Where can we find a human being who reaches that stage? This is the conclusion of spiritualism. Spiritualism is when you, whatever you do, you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You forget about yourself. Whatever you do, you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fatima reached that stage. It's unfortunate. It's not the topic. I'm saying this for the sake of understanding, especially to you young men and women. Do you know how many a hadith has been narrated or have been narrated by Bukhari in his Sahih, Al-Bukhari about Fatima? Can you give a guess, please? 500, 100, 50? Only one. One hadith. Fatima, the daughter of Rasulullah, inna a'tainaka al the one who was the center of spiritualism, there is only one hadith. It means that we do not understand Fatima, and we will never understand Fatima if we depend on the books like Bukhari and example of Bukhari. Why? Because they don't tell us the real picture of Fatima to Zahra. So, final point, in order for us to understand Fatima, let us go back to Hadith al-Thaqalain, where the Holy Prophet said, Inni tarikun fikum al-Thaqalain. Kitab Allah wa itirati ahla bayti. I live amongst you too, precious important, weighty things. If you hold on the two, you will never go astray. The book of Allah and my Ahlul Bayt. We follow Ahlul Bayt, we will understand Fatima to Zahra, alayhi salam, in terms of spiritualism. Here, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to go for Hajj and Umrah and Ziyara of the Holy Prophet. While we are in Medina, maybe we may be able to get the blessings of Fatima by visiting her, insha'Allah ta'ala. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum.